John Gibbons, and you've tuned into my channel, so you already know who I am. Uh, I've just recorded a piece from Shakespeare, Macbeth, and if uh, any of my generation of Lawrence County High School remembers anything, we probably remember having to learn the, the Tomorrow and Tomorrow soliloquy from Macbeth for Miss Chitwood. But anyway, today I decided to, you know, go in costume to do the scene as if I was about ready to go into combat, you know, his final battle. Now, I am wearing chain armor, or, or mail. Um, a lot of people just call it chain mail, but the proper name is really just mail. Now, this shirt has 30,000 individual overlapping rings, and it weighs about 29 pounds. Now, that's the shipping weight of it. And so this is not light. Now the thing is, if, you, you've, if you've ever worn a hiking pack that weighs 30 pounds, it's coming down your shoulders and it's going to be painful. This is 30 pounds spread out over my shoulders, supported by my chest, uh, by my back. So it's not as bad a wear. Now it's still heavy. I won't stand here and deny that. But yeah, anyway. But uh, male armor has been around since at least the 4th century. Uh, Romans used it. Now, we, when we think of a Roman soldier, we think of the the centurion in the Bible. You know, the the, the banded plate armor. By the end of the Roman Empire, no, this is what they were wearing, and this was a staple of medieval Europe uh, armor. Well, up into the 1400s, uh, of course, what I'm wearing is not proper mail. Uh, proper mail. Uh, the rings, the ends of the rings overlap and they're riveted together. So it's a good solid piece. Now this is budded chain mail, which means the ring is just uh, brought to a close. And this stuff is easy to pop. I hadn't had this very long and I popped out the, uh, the rings under this armpit and I had to get it fixed. Uh, but man, it came to the Renaissance Fair. But anyway, this was state of the art for a very long time. Now, as medieval armorers improved their skills in creating plate, they were able to replace the chain with armor like that. Nice, solid plate. But this took a long time to develop. So up to then, they're wearing this. Now, this will stop being cut. It's going to go straight across. Uh, now, it's not going to stop me from being stabbed because this has a very narrow point. But a wide enough blade, no, it's not going to penetrate this. Now, underneath it, something you never see in those fantasy movies is the padding. Now, this is actually just quilting uh, because that stuff is hot and heavy and you can't really see it underneath all this. But, uh, yeah, here's a sleeve. Now, underneath armor, all kinds of armor, they wore padding. Because, well, this will stop you from being cut. This stops you from being hurt by the blade. All right. This sword is going to be stopped by the chain. But uh, this is still an iron bar and you get hit with it, and your body is gonna suffer the effects of being hit by an iron bar. All kinds of internal bleeding, broken bones. In fact, this particular weapon, its whole purpose is to break bones and to get through this. So, to protect you from the strike itself, you need padding. And the names of this padding varies. Uh, I've seen names for it as a gambeson, Akaton, arming jacket. It, it depends, I guess, on the region or the time period. And don't quote me on that. Uh, go look it up for yourself. I encourage you to do that. Because when I'm quoting something, it's something I read years ago. So my memory might be a little fuzzy. Uh, there's a great book that I've, this is my Bible for armor and weapons. Uh, Arms and Armor of the Medieval Knight. It's probably, you know, of course, it's, there's plenty of other books out there. Uh, there's a man named Tobias Capwell who's written a lot about armor, and he's probably the authority 
that you should look to. Uh, but any event, chain armor or mail did its job. It protected you. Now, it's kind of heavy, and right now I am a little hot. I've been in this for at this point for about 45 minutes. Uh, my uh, the longs I've spent in this suit of armor, and I have worn it a few times, is probably about an hour and a half, and uh, I overheated because the materials they would have used in the Middle Ages would have been horsehair or linen or something of that nature. This has polyfill and it holds in body heat like you wouldn't believe. It is the best winter coat I've ever owned. So. Now, pulling back this, and we see we've got a little bit of chain mail on here. Uh, as plate progressed, as reduced weight, they stopped using as much chain. So after a while, you stopped seeing a full shirt underneath the plate armor because it was just too heavy. But, they would start sewing in pieces in critical spots, like under the armpit or any other place where there might be gaps in the plate. Now, my entire suit is here. I haven't uh, put the arms itself back on. But, I mean, this gives you a general idea. And I'm not even going for a suit of armor for a knight with this. This is more like soldier battlefield scavenging. You know, later on, we're going to do, I'll do a video on all those pieces. This is primarily just to show you chain armor and to give you an idea of what it was. So, uh, I encourage you to go looking up uh, more about armor, about mail, and other armor systems. And again, we have this full uh, plate. But then there was a, a, a form of armor called the brigandine. And what it was, it was a vest, an armored vest that had plates inside it. And this was their march up from this to that. So I encourage you, go look it up, learn more about it. So, uh, with those words in mind, stay home, stay safe, and keep learning. Thank you.